another step then is in the 2030s when we can actually connect our neocortex, which is where we do our thinking, to computers. And I mean, j just as this actually gains a lot to being connected to computers that will amplify its abilities. I mean, if this did not have any connection, it, it would be pretty stupid. It, it could not answer any of your questions. If you're just listening to this, by the way, Ray's holding up the, uh, the all-powerful uh, smartphone. So we're gonna do that directly from our brains. I mean, these are pretty good. These already have amplified our intelligence. I'm already much smarter than I would otherwise be if I didn't have this. Because I remember when I first spoke The Age of Intelligent Machines, uh, the, there was no way to get uh, information from computers. I actually would go to a library, find a book, find the page that had an information I wanted, and I'd go to the copier, and my most significant uh, information tool was a roll of quarters where I could feed the, the copier. Yeah. So we're already greatly advanced that we have these things. There's a few problems with it. First of all, I, I constantly put it down and I don't remember where I put it. I've actually never lost it, but um, you have to find it and then you have to turn it on. So there's a certain amount of steps. It would actually be quite useful if someone would just listen to your conversation and say, uh, oh, that's you know, so-and-so actress um, and tell you what you're talking about. So going from active to passive, where it just permeates your whole life. Yeah, exactly. The way your brain does when you're awake. Your brain is always there. Right. Now, that's something that could actually just just about be done today, where you would listen to your conversation, understand what you're saying, understand what you're uh, not missing and give you that information. But another step is to actually go inside your brain. Yeah. Uh, and there are some prototypes where you can connect your brain. They actually don't have the, the amount of bandwidth that we need. They can work, but they work fairly slowly. So if, if it actually would connect to your neocortex, and the neocortex, which I described in How to Create a Mind, uh, the neocortex is actually, uh, it has different levels. And as you go up the levels, it's kind of like a pyramid. The top level is fairly small. And that's the level where you want to connect uh, these brain extenders. Um, so I believe that will happen in the 2030s. We will actually, so just the way this is, uh, greatly amplified by being connected to the cloud, uh, we can connect our own brain to the cloud and uh, just do what we can do by using this machine. Do you think it would look like uh, the brain-computer interface uh, of like Neuralink? So would it be? Well, Neuralink is an attempt to do that. It doesn't have the bandwidth that we need. Um, Yet, right? Uh, right, but I, I think I mean, they're gonna get permission for this because there are a lot of people who absolutely need it because they can't communicate. I, I know a couple of people like that who have ideas and they cannot, they don't, they cannot move their muscles and so on, they can't communicate. Uh, so f for them, this would be very valuable, but we could all use it. Basically, it'd be, uh, turn us into something that would be like we have a phone, but it would be in our mind. It would be kind of instantaneous. And maybe communication between two people would not require this low bandwidth mechanism of language. Yes, a spoken word. exactly. We, we don't know what that would be, although we do know that uh, computers can share information like language instantly. They can share many, many books in, in a second. So we could do that as well. If you look at what our brain does, it actually can manipulate different parameters. So we, we talk about these large language models. Um, I mean, I, I had written that uh, 
it requires a certain amount of information in order to uh, be effective, and that we would not see AI really being effective until it got to that level. Mm -hmm. And we had large language models that were like 10 billion bytes, it didn't work very well. They finally got to 100 billion bytes, and now they work fairly well, and, and now we're going to a, a trillion bytes. If you say uh, Lambda has a 100 a billion bytes, what does that mean? Well, what, what if you had something that had one byte, one, one parameter? Maybe you want to tell whether or not something's uh, an elephant or not. And so you put in something that would detect its trunk. If it has a trunk, it's an elephant. If it doesn't have a trunk, it's not an elephant. And that would work fairly well. There's a few problems with it. Um, and it really wouldn't be able to tell what a trunk is, but anyway. And maybe other things other than elephants have trunks. You might yes. get really confused. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not sure which animals have trunks, but you know. Um, plus, how do you define a trunk? But yeah, that's one parameter. You, you so can do okay. <laughs> so these things have a hundred billion parameters, so they're able yes. to deal with very complex issues, all kinds of trunks. Human beings actually have a little bit more than that, but they're, they're getting to the point where they can emulate humans. Um, if we were able to connect this to our uh, neocortex, we would basically add more of these uh, abilities to make distinctions and it could ultimately be much smarter and also be attached to information that we feel is reliable. Um, so that's where we're headed. So you think that there will be a, a merger in the 30s, an right. increasing amount of merging between the either human brain and the AI brain? Exactly. And, and the AI brain is really an, an emulation of human beings. I mean, that's why we're creating them because human beings act the same way, and this is basically to amplify them. I mean, this amplifies our brain. Um, it's a little bit clumsy to interact with, but it definitely is you know, way beyond what, what we had 15 years ago. But the implementation becomes different, just like a bird versus the airplane. The Even though the AI brain is an emulation, it starts adding features we might not otherwise have like ability to consume a huge amount of information quickly, like look up thousands of Wikipedia articles in one take. Exactly. I mean, we can get, for example, to issues like simulated biology where it can uh, simulate many different things at once. Um, I mean, we, we already had one example of simulated biology, which is the Moderna vaccine. Um, and, and that's going to be now the way in which we create uh, medications. But they were able to simulate what each example of an mRNA would do to a human being, and they were able to simulate that quite reliably. And we actually simulated billions of different mRNA sequences. And they found the ones that, that were the best, and they created the vaccine. And they did, and talk about doing that quickly, they did that in two days. Now, how long would a human being take to, to simulate billions of different mRNA sequences? I, I don't know that we could do it at all, but it would take many years. They did it in two days. And one of the reasons that people didn't like vaccines is because it was done too quickly. No, it was done too fast. Uh, and they actually included the time it, it took to test it out, which was 10 months. So this is, so they figured, okay, it took 10 months to create this. Actually, it took us two days. <laughs> yeah. And we also will be able to ultimately do the tests in a, in a few days as well. Oh, because we can simulate how the body will respond to it. Yeah, more and more now, that's accurate. a little bit more complicated because the body has a lot of different elements and we have to simulate all of that. Uh, but that's coming as well. So ultimately we could create it in a few days and then test it in a few days and it would be done. Uh, and we can do that with every type of medical in, you know, insufficiency that we have. So curing all diseases, yes. um, yeah. improving f certain functions of the body, supplements, drugs, 
for recreation, for health, for performance, for productivity, all that. Well, kind that's of stuff. where we're headed. Because I mean, right right now we have a very inefficient way of creating these new medications, um, but we've already shown it, and the Moderna vaccine is actually the best uh, of the of the vaccines we've had, uh, and it literally took two days to create, uh, and we'll get to the point where we can test it out also quickly. 